Uh, Nadia Fox and Professor wow. David Wilson are joining Welcome. us. Welcome. Now, we'll talk about that particular case in just a moment. Um, but what is it about... We've had this discussion before. What is it about true crime that sparks such massive interest? Because Series 1 was huge. You're back with Series 2 now, so there is a real appetite. Well, I, I think there is a difference between people who consume true crime and people who consume fictional crime, mm -hmm. which is Mills's side of uh, the house. I think an interest in true crime is not just normal. An interest in true crime is necessary because if you understand the circumstances in which you are going to face violence, or indeed, in the worst example, you're going to face murder, understanding how those circumstances occur allow you to avoid them. And so I think it's built into human DNA that we try to solve the mystery of when we are going to face our, mo our, our biggest threats. But that's slightly different mm. from why people are interested in fictional mm. crime, isn't it? I think there's something with true crime as well, that we're trying to make sense of the senseless mm. and something that... I think about Silent Witness as being um, a behind-the-scenes look at mm. crime solving. And then when you look at true crime, you're getting to meet experts like David and Graham Hill um, and to look at the investigations through their eyes and certainly with these cold cases to uh, try and look at the evidence and shed some new light on it. And that's the key, isn't it? Shedding new light, you know, using kind of more maybe modern-day technology or modern-day thoughts and theories to be able to, to, to hopefully solve this or well, potentially... Well, this very first episode was yeah. in 1979 and Mills and I were just discussing in the green room, you know, that's actually seven years away from the very first person that's ever going to be convicted through a DNA fingerprint. Right. So by going back to these historic cold cases, you can not just bring new techniques, you can bring a different insight. You know, how Carol Lannan was reported upon in the press was one of the first things that we picked up on, and you would never see the kinds of adjectives that were used to describe her and her lifestyle uh, today, right. even though those were used commonly at the time. So, this is te the Templeton Woods murders in Dundee. Yeah. Um, and this is 1979, as you say. It's the murder of Carol Lannan, and then uh, almost... I mean, a year afterwards, uh, Elizabeth McKay. Um, and, uh, and there were links which I think you have begun to scratch away at with, uh, with a, a children's home. Yeah, and the first thing that I had to be... Uh, I had to be clear that were these two murders connected or were there two different killers? And there had always been a sense in which the story was told as if it was the same killer. So the first thing for me was, could I see a connection between the two murders themselves? And as you're saying, Phil, you know, their bodies are found in the same location, very close to one another. They'd both been strangled. But I felt that there would have been an escalation if it had been the same killer, between what he does to Carol Lannan and if he was the same killer, what he would do to Elizabeth McCabe. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't see that escalation. And so that began, for me, to mean that I felt we were looking at two different mm -hmm. murders. And by looking at those two different murders, we then concentrated on Carol Lannan and started to build up her, a picture of her life and her childhood. And while this episode focuses on Carol Lannan, there is, of course... Uh, the unsolved murder of Elizabeth McCabe as well. So, But there is one name here, and that is the name of Andrew Hunter. Andrew Hunter emerged because when we were building up a picture of Carol Lannan's childhood and her background, she had been in care in Dundee. And therefore, we started investigating the care um, home that she had been in. And guess what? Andrew Hunter had also worked as a care worker, a social worker, mm -hmm in that home. So that initially gave us some kind of connection between him and Carol Lannan that had previously been hinted at but not really pursued. And then we tried to build up a picture of Andrew Hunter. You know, what's interesting is in Scotland, this is a well-known case, but it's not that well-known in England. And so there's a sense in which what we were also trying to do was just 
shed light on some of these cold cases mm. that can be heated up again mm -hmm. just by bringing attention to them. You, what's lovely about this partnership is that you approach it from very different ways. I mean, you've got your criminologist, which helps you enter the mind of a criminal so you, you can see how they think. Mm -hmm. You approach it like most of the rest of us, which is why, exactly. how, you know, without that sort of understanding of a criminal mind. Exactly. Asking the questions yeah. which I think people might ask when they're watching yeah. the programme. And also... David and Graham approach it professionally and I definitely invest in the stories emotionally. So when we have been meeting um, the families of loved ones and hearing how frustrating it is oh, that they imagine. do not have answers, yeah. these cases are still unsolved decades on and that someone in communities might know something and might feel with the distance of time that they can step yeah, forward and yeah, give new point. information. In Silent Witnesses, which just started again, yeah. um, so incredibly popular. How many series is this? Series 26. 26. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, mad. You are investigating as a character. Mm -hmm. um, and so now, obviously, you're, in, you're investigating and you're interested mm -hmm. as yourself. Mm -hmm. um, do the two cross over at all? Well, I, you know, I'm very, very clear. One is playing a character and fictional crime solving, and it's very, very different when you're um, looking at crimes with David and Graham. That you're the voice real. of the viewer, aren't you? Yes. You're the voice of the viewer. You're saying to Graham and me periodically, which she does, trust me, <laughs> she'll say, well, what does that mean when you're using that acronym, when you're saying SIO, when you're talking about, you know, offender profiling? Explain that. You've got to go through and explain that and how it applies what to this case. What about playing the character, though? Once you've done this for real and then you feel, as you say, the pain of an mm. unsolved murder, you've mm. lost a family member and you don't think you're ever going to get yeah. any sort of closure to it. Absolutely. Well, you're talking to real people who've been affected by violent crime and are still affected by it. I think with Silent Witness, I am so lucky that for so many years I've got to work with experts yeah. who really work on solving crime and with the pathologists and uh, the experts who talk us through every post-mortem that yeah. we do. And then through working with David and Graham on this series, again, I'm being able to ask questions and find out mm. about how crimes are solved in real life. And also through the podcast that we do together, we've been inter interviewing such interesting people. She was fangirling at Christmas because she got to meet one of her big heroes, a forensic anthropologist called Professor Dame Sue Black. And you got to do the Christmas lecture with her, didn't you? Yes, and it was a lecture to 11 to 16-year-olds. And I thought, if I'd seen that lecture, and known what people do, what that profession is, yeah. I might have chosen a completely different path in life. I mean, it's, so... it is completely fascinating, and this series is hugely popular. I think the first series you can probably catch up on, but this is the second series. It's tonight at 10 pm on Channel 4 in the footsteps of killers. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much.